Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about how to make a raw diet more cheap, more cost effective. I feel like if you're getting into a, a raw vegan diet, it's pretty well known, at least on, on YouTube especially, that it can be super expensive and people that are perpetuating that stigma are like Fully Raw Christina or Kate Flowers and absolutely no hate to them. But if you watch their videos, you see that they have the money to like drop $100 at Whole Foods like every day. I definitely don't have that kind of money, but I am able to sustain a raw vegan diet using these five tips and tricks that I'm going to share with you now. Now, just for a little bit of context, so it's a little hard for me to calculate. If you would like an exact number of how much I spend week to week on groceries, for my raw diet specifically, please let me know and I'll figure it out for you or I can tell you like approximately what I'm spending um, per day or even per meal because I do buy groceries for me and my boyfriend who is not raw and sometimes I, I do the majority of my shopping on Saturdays but then sometimes I have to go to the store like midweek or something for a couple extra grocery items so I will definitely gather those receipts and figure it out for you if that's something that you're interested in but of course I do try to keep it as low as humanly possible. So tip number one is decide what's important to you. Are you someone that won't eat food if it's not organic? Are you someone that doesn't want to eat 80-10-10? Um, if you don't know what 80-10-10 is, that's the macro ratio where 80% of your calories are coming from carbs, 10 from protein, and 10 from fat. And honestly, on a raw vegan diet, the most expensive items are fat. So nuts and seeds, or like raw nut and seed butters are very, very expensive. It is more cost effective to eat a lower fat diet, but if you are someone that wants to eat higher fat, then you would have to factor that in as well. Now, I do not eat 80-10-10. That's just not really something that appeals to me. Like when I eat my salads at night or whatever, like zoodles, whatever I'm making, I like it to have fat in it as a dressing. It makes it way more satisfying for me. I probably wouldn't be raw if I couldn't eat nuts or seeds. But my way of spending a little bit less money in that department is instead of getting the raw, certified raw vegan organic almond butter for 20 bucks, I buy just a regular almond butter for about five or six dollars. And the only ingredient is almonds. So it's not like almonds and cane sugar and all these random oils and fillers and stuff, it's just almonds. So I feel okay substituting that. Not everybody is gonna feel that way, but it is a way to save a lot of money. All right, number two is gonna be sort of formulating your diet plan and choosing your meals. So every week I write down everything that I wanna eat, breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, whatever. I write it all down and I go shopping in my pantry first. I always make sure Hey, if I know that I'm gonna be using roughly a cup or two of walnuts a week, I will check and see if I already have it. And I get really like specific down to the letter where I'm like, I need this much of a watermelon for this and this much for this and this for this. So I know that I can get away with having like two and a half watermelons, so I'll buy three watermelons and I'll carry that over into the next week. And like, I really try to figure it out so I'm buying the least amount of food as humanly possible. Of course, while staying within my goals and like my caloric needs. <laughs> All right, number three is gonna be shop around. I go grocery shopping at like four or so different places currently, and it really just depends on what I need that week, it determines where I go. So like yesterday I went shopping at Aldi because I knew that everything I needed to get would be at Aldi and it's very inexpensive to shop there. But sometimes I need something just like a little bit more specialty that Aldi won't carry, but maybe Walmart will have it and will have it for cheaper than like Publix will. So I kind of just have to go around and see what's gonna be the least expensive. Also, it has been hard for me to find online how much each thing costs before I go there. So it's really having to go to the physical place and kind of scout it out and compare your options. Just the other day, I went to like a produce market that was like um, open air family owned and it was 49 cents per pound of bananas. If you go to Target, it's 25 cents a banana. It's stuff like that where I will kind of adjust where I go each week or maybe even go a little bit out of my way to save a decent amount of money. If I bought all the same groceries every week at Publix versus Aldi, I'm sure my bills would be like three times higher. All right, number four is gonna be adapt, be flexible, and shop seasonal. So what I mean by this is when I buy food, I want it to be multi-purpose in the way that when I buy everything, I want it to be multi-purpose as a minimalist. So if I'm like, oh, I want strawberries for this, that, and the other thing, that's great because I can freeze those strawberries if I don't think that I'll end up using them all. Or if I get to the end of the week and they're not looking so good or something or other happens, 
but I would rather get strawberries versus like pears or something, which I wouldn't necessarily want to freeze because I wouldn't really know what to do with it afterwards. Same with my greens. Uh, I always, always get kale because I like to freeze kale and put it in smoothies and stuff, but I wouldn't do that with like romaine. <laughs> I also do make a lot of juice. Um, going back to tip number one, what's important to you, what you want your diet to actually look like. I am someone who would like to drink between 16 and 24 ounces of juice every morning as breakfast. So I have, like I have my green juice right here right now. This is a little bit of an unconventional green juice, so I want my base to be watermelon, which is not common for green juice at all, but as the name suggests, it's very high water content. You get a lot of juice out of it. You get way more juice out of like one watermelon than you would even like five or 10 apples. So as far as cost wise, I can make a lot more juice for a lot less money with a watermelon base. The rest of it is kind of random, well, there are some plain vegetables in here, but there's some random vegetables that were kind of on their way out that I juiced to like save them. So if I'm on my last like cup or so of kale and it's looking a little wilty, I'll juice it instead of just throwing it away because I don't like food waste. So that is a tip. Um, also, speaking of watermelon, I do shop seasonally as well. So right now it's summer, watermelons are coming into season. I'm gonna be buying a lot of watermelons while they cost less and while they're more available. And then, of course, that'll change as time goes on too. In the winter, if I'm still raw, then I'll probably be buying more apples um, when they're in season. Kind of being flexible in that way, adapting your diet to the change in season, to the change in prices. And just as a follow-up, if you've never seen my videos before, I do generally eat raw in the spring, summer, and sometimes throughout the fall and winter, I do eat kind of high raw regardless but I'm pretty much fully raw every spring and summer. So if I remain fully raw throughout the fall and winter, which is very possible because I love eating raw, again, I'll be kind of switching the things I eat more seasonally. And the last tip I have is simplify everything. So the way that I meal prep for myself or like at least plan out what I wanna eat is I will generally pick maybe two lunches, two dinners, and I kind of flip flop them through the week so that I can buy the items I need for them more in bulk and save money that way. And then having a simpler diet just in general usually costs less and it can be a lot more healthy. But of course you have to recognize in yourself if you're someone that needs like constant variety, otherwise you're gonna get bored or you're gonna drop this diet altogether. And if it's something that's important to you that you wanna stick to, then of course you make those adjustments for yourself. But I'm someone who can eat like one thing and then something else the next day and then repeat for a full week. And that's how I prep my food. Also, uh, mono mealing is probably something that's good to look into. Um, maybe not making a bunch of bougie recipes in the dehydrator or something like that because what usually ends up happening with dehydrator recipes is you have like a large quantity of food that shrinks on down and is d delicious and fun and interesting and cool on a raw diet but is not ultimately going to be super satiating for you and you're probably going to want something else. I like to mono meal like pineapples when they're in season, oranges, watermelon, like papaya, large fruits that usually don't cost a whole lot of money depending on what season it is, of course. I can get out of a watermelon, like a large watermelon, somewhere between two and four meals, and that works out really well for me. Keeping it simple like that, just about like 400 or so calories of fruit as a meal, and that'll ultimately be less expensive than having like a fancy kale salad with a high fat dressing with walnuts and extra dried fruit in it, which I love and I've made videos about and is one of my favorite things. But I don't wanna eat that for every meal because it's gonna be way too pricey. Yeah, that is what I have come up with that has helped me save a lot of money eating raw vegan. Recently, I mean, obviously we all hope that we're gonna be at a place in life where we don't feel guilty buying cashews, but hey, I'm not there. I'm assuming other people aren't there, so I hope these tips are helpful to you. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below, as well as giving this video a like and subscribing to me. Check out the links in my description for my other social media sites and a link to my Patreon, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.